day three of the Can Yacht Show, and when I asked viewers which brand they wanted me to show, one name stood out above all others, and that was Bering Yachts. Now, I have to be honest, Bering Yachts are a company I didn't know that well. I've done a little bit of research, and I've found out that the quality of these yachts has come on in leaps and bounds over the years. So we're lucky enough to be here with Alexei Mikolov, who is the founder of Bering Yachts and the president of the company, He's going to show us the 70. Now this is an older model. So as we go along looking at this boat, he's also going to explain to us about the great improvements that Bering have made over the years. So Alexi, thank you very much indeed. And thank I'll you. let you lead the way, show us through the boat. Yes, um, a few words about Bering in general, what we're doing. Uh, we build steel aluminum boats and we focus in on boats under 24 meters because we think it it's, it's makes sense to be on the boats under 24 meter cost-wise, and it gives you pretty much the same comfort as the boats much larger. So uh, right now we are on our smallest boat uh, in production. It's a model of Bering 70, it's five years old. Uh, we use it as a company boat, uh, uh, a lot of travels, a lot of uh, a lot of miles covered on this boat, and now it's sold. Okay. So, and we are uh, choosing new company boat bearing 80. It's right here. The model is here. It's way bigger boat. It's three times bigger than this one. So it's our new company demo. We will roam the world on right. this. And um, a few words about this boat. So under 24 meters, a lot of people, especially in Northern American part of the world, they consider it owner-operator. And this boat is set up as an owner-operator boat. Okay. Uh, however, we made a mistake, which we're correcting right now. Uh, so this, um, uh, this boat is designed with no crew quarters. Okay. So it's a, it's a small boat, it's a 73 feet, it's three stateroom, three hats, uh, so pretty much standard what you have on a 70-footer, but no crew quarters. And we realized that design appealing to European market, and European market needs the crew. crew. Yeah. So America have tendency to use the boat of this size with no crew, and Europe, so we redesigned this boat, we had the crew quarters, and changed the layout okay. to make it more comfortable, because I spent three months consecutively during this COVID uh, isolation, for three yeah. months, we were in a remote location, just three of us, a family, and I had oh, a on chance the on the boat. Oh, yeah, fantastic. on the boat, fantastic. like no, no, Isolating. no way out, yeah. isolated at anchor. Yeah. So, and um, uh, it was a lot of time to see what's wrong and redesign completely. Yeah. So, and basically, we were evolving all our boats like yeah. this. We we. We, we're trying to find the best yeah. solution for, for every system, for every corner of the boat, every square yeah. inch. Well, let's take so a look around. Do you wanna, let's which take one a look you around to first. Uh, let's, let's, let's walk around the main deck. Good. So this boat is um, uh, two decks. Um, we're on the main deck right now. It's pretty spacious uh, sidewalks. Now this is a so steel hull, isn't it? Uh, the, the hull is steel. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, this boat is the only we made in steel and fiberglass. So, so the, fiberglass the superstructure, superstructure is fiberglass and nothing wrong. So you see there's no visual, like you can't detect yeah. if it's aluminum or yeah. fiberglass, but we didn't find any, any, any benefits of doing this. So we stick with steel aluminum. It oh, was okay. a... So the new bearings, steel hull. All steel, steel hull, uh, aluminum. Let's take a look up at the bow. Yeah. Forward deck, uh, again, it's open to anchors. Uh, uh, good sun pad with a big trunk where we keep all the fenders and many other stuff. It's it's a huge storage right here. This hatch yep. accessing the big area, the chain locker forward, and this is a big area with freezers, refrigerators, and stuff. Fantastic. So let's walk to. Right. Let's check the flybridge first, and then we will. Okay. We'll That's, see the interior. Sounds logical. How many of these did you build, Alexi? Uh, we have two, uh, one under construction, we're launching next month. Okay. Uh, this is the smallest model in the range. Smallest model in yeah. the range, right. And uh, we have one on order. Oh no, we're going up. Oh, oh this is lovely. Yeah. 
yeah, so this is pretty open space again. We have a helm. Um, some people prefer to drive from upper station. Again, this is owner operator if it's a captain boat. When you're running it, you usually use the upper station? No, I use helm. I, I use helm. I don't understand this upper stations, but uh, <laughs> people, want them, people, yeah. want, pe people want it, we yeah. put it. It's yeah. no problem. It's optional, but this option available for all boats. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the remote controls now yeah. into play big time. And we we doing this too. So it's very comfortable. Eight people can have a nice dinner here. We have a full galley here. Yeah, it's can we a take grill. a look at that? Do you want to go through first, Lava? Yeah. We'll, uh... You can see here two burner, electric grill, sink, fridge, refrigerator. So that's that helps to the small galley inside. And this is and really impressive because that's quite a big tender for a seventy foot yacht. That's I uh, think that's it's three point six. Yeah, but with with a powerful motor, this yeah. thing can run. And um, so it's uh, Steelhead Marina, our favorite manufacturer of um, lifting equipment. Yeah, what's the capacity on the... Uh, it's a thousand pounds, like okay. 450 kg. Yeah, so more than enough. Uh, yeah, for it's, it's enough. It's, it's, for, it's hydraulic for action with remote control. So it's very, very reliable and very... When you're good. running the yacht, how many people do you need? Two or three to launch the tender? One. You can do that on your own? One. Yeah? One person. Even my so son, just... 20, 12 years old, I really? tell him, go and launch. And yeah. he's doing it on his own. Wow. So it's very easy. <laughs> we have solar panels upstairs so we can, we can see the edges of it. So solar panels are good. We put them, it's, again, it's elective. Yeah. So, but we recommend it highly because it's keep trickling the electricity yeah. into your battery bank. and. You know, if it's a good weather in Mediterranean, uh, you can run your generator just a few hours at night, fill up the batteries in the daytime, oh, you, if you don't need air conditioning, yeah. of course. So we are in the cockpit now. It's fairly spacious for the size of the boat. Uh, this table accommodates comfortably uh, 10 people and uh, plenty of space to dance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's have a little sink and cabinets here, a little storage and um, so, very simple. And I've actually got side doors on both sides. Yes. Uh, so for the United States, uh, you tend to dock side two. Yeah, you can so. you can use this, this. The open open galley. It's a full galley. Got dishwasher, garbage disposal, microwave convection cooktop, yeah. um, freezers, refrigerators. So it looks like a lot of uh, fridge and freezer space. Yeah, we have we have enough, and we can put plenty more. Yeah. Um, again, this boat is the only model. Like I said, it's the yeah. smallest model, and it's the only model which we not consider as a, as a global traveler because right. the range of this boat. Although in the new um, in a, a new configuration, we we. Uh, get the range up to 3,000 miles, yeah. and this particular boat have around 2,000 miles range. Ah, so you've increased the range on the new we models increase, by We increase the range, we add the crew cabins, and we make it uh, suitable, because it's a contradiction, this style yeah. uh, is uh, appealing to European clientele. Yeah. Let's have a look at the helm station, if that's yeah. okay. This is, you said about it being militaristic. This is very, very <laughs> military style, isn't it? Yeah, but mainly from outside because from inside you don't see it. Uh, this got again, it's uh, it's no nonsense. It's it's simple, but everything you need you have here: two VHFs, electrical panel, 24 to 20 all the electronics control here, two Furuna computers um, with repeaters up, um, thrusters, searchlights, like all standard things yeah. right here. Uh, we deviate from the helm chair because when you're actually driving the boat, yeah. you don't yeah. need to sit, you're sure. standing up. Sure. And when you're docking, you need to jump yeah. out and the chair is your obstacle. And actually, and that's a better use of space. This, this one, you yeah. see the visibility from here and yeah. all your instruments in view. You have a very good 270 degree view. You can get your computer out. You your have route, your you coffee, can, your computer, yeah. and your even remote. If you need to tweak the yeah. course, you can do it right from here. 
nice. So very very nice. It's 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 confined space, yeah. but we try to make the best use of it. We also make one staircase instead of two. So this room, I pretty much identical except for the staircase. Yeah, will be in the room, ah, not out of the it. room. So yeah, but that's so much more comfortable. It, it is. We, yeah. We're saving. We're saving about two square meters by. Yeah eliminating one staircase. Uh, Who's your designer? Is it in-house design? Yeah, it's all in-house design. Yeah. All our boats in-house, naval architecture, in-house design, yeah. interiors, exterior styling, yeah. and execution. That's also a saving on... It on, is, on and cost, it? it's yeah. flexibility in customizing yeah. because we are believe in customizing. Excellent. So. Let's just get a bit of footage of the bathroom while we're here as okay. well. So people know there's a bathroom and <laughs> on suite. Let's have a look back up. So the VIP forward, a guest here, yeah, and then this. The this, master I must is. Admit, I saw this earlier, and it absolutely uh, blew me away. Actually, it's quite an unexpected surprise. Have a look at the master stateroom. Yeah, it's a California King two by two meters bed, and um, you see, it's plenty of space here. The thing is, again, a coastal navigator. The, the long range traveler, uh, traveling boat yeah. have to have a lot of space yeah. because people have tendency to care a lot and it's easy to explain season change, the weather change, they need winter gear, summer yeah. gear, diving gear. So the, the amount of stuff going on a boat is enormous yeah. and this boat have much less storage. Yeah. Uh, so it's why we wouldn't say like it's it would be a, the best boat for liveaboard. Well, I saw two interesting things. First of all, the, yeah. these handles here it looks like it's to make yeah it we, a watertight we keep door. Uh, watertight compartments. Again, this this boat uh, we we believe in safety, and we believe in you know the boat have to have a watertight compartments. So. This boat have five watertight compartments. Is uh, one is the engine room yeah. aft, then its compartment where is this guest head and and yeah. the cabin and companion way. Then it's another compartment. Then it's no door in this bulkhead, right. and then it's a forward VIP where we just where we had a look at. Earlier. Yeah, and then it's a chain locker, which right. is a big compartment yeah. with a crash bulkhead. Yeah, it's it's a it's a bulkhead yeah. too. So that's the reason why we have this door. Aluminum, Excellent. and then that looks like it yeah. might go to the engine room. Perhaps. Yeah. So let's take a look at that. This is the engine room. So this is a fireproof door. You can see this door weighs about 200 kilos. So it's yeah. a true watertight door. So you can see here everything. Everything is accessible and nothing behind something. You don't yeah. have to dismantle something to fix something. It looks to me like your your philosophy is keeping it simple. Keep it simple. Simple. No unnecessary gadgets that can go wrong. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing too complicated that can break. Simple engines. Simple construction. It's solid construction. Solid and redundant. Yeah. What is most important? Redundancy. Redundancy. Yeah. Redundancy. We have two water heaters, two water pumps, two bilge pumps in each compartment, two engines, two generators, two of everything. Yeah. Alexi, that's been the most fantastic tour. All and right. I, I've, I'm coming away from bearing with much better knowledge about it and a lot more enthusiasm for the brand as well. So thank, thank you, you very and, much and indeed. And you should come to Antalya. I want to do that and I'll you bring my team with me as well and we'll, we'll film a little bit Absolutely. of the show. So that is another Yachts for Sale and Charter YouTube channel walkthrough of the Bearing 70, the greatest channel on the interweb for walkthrough videos of yachts with more engagement, more personality, more style, more views, more... Nick. Hello. How are you? Very well. What are you doing here? Well, I couldn't see how the master does it. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I'd pick up a few tips. <laughs> What do you think of the boat? Oh, yeah, it's magnificent. It's a proper little ship. I reckon, in fact, you could probably find a really nice place to tuck yourself into a corner with a good book. <laughs> <laughs> I think everything will be unrevealed, or will be revealed on that comment very soon, actually. Won't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Now, I told my viewers that we were going to do a live stream. Yep. 
Nick has become more popular than the Osteria Francescana in Modena. You have to book him six months ahead of time. You're very kind. <laughs> Added to that, the Wi-Fi coverage in the show is not brilliant, and we didn't want to do a live stream where we're cutting in and out. So we put that back to the Monaco show. Mm -hmm. We've got the Northrop and Johnson offices with fiber optic, uh, Wi-Fi connections there, so we should be able to do a great live stream. So, Absolutely. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. So I'll see Brilliant. you at Monaco. I know you've got, what, what else are you filming while you're, you're All here? All kinds of stuff. They've got the new Sunseekers here. They've got uh, a golf craft. I've just been on that one yesterday. Got a lot of stuff lined up as well. I'm having a real intensive couple of days just trying to get as much as I can. This is the first time I've managed to get abroad for alcoholic in over a year, so I'm trying to make the most of it. Yeah. Oh, you've not been abroad for over a year? No, over a year. Oh, you've no. done really well getting the content out. <laughs> yeah, I've done my <laughs> best yeah, yeah very my good. best but we've been missing the super yachts and that's what i'm trying to get here excellent yeah. well thanks nick i really it's a appreciate pleasure. that i'll leave you in peace yeah, and, and wrap up properly and i'll see you at monaco okay take bye. care bye cheers Okay, so having taken a look at the Bering yacht, we're now at the Baglietto stand, which is literally just across the way from the pontoon. And Baglietto very kindly have offered to allow us to take a look at the yacht unaccompanied. And what a yacht. This is classic Baglietto. Really imposing, lots of, please feel free to pass through. <laughs> very imposing, real dock presence. Look how high it is out of the water. This is a 40 meter yacht. And you can just imagine that if you're eating on the aft deck there, you're high enough out of the water to retain some privacy. Going a little bit lower down, <coughs> look at that for a beach club. That must be absolutely thrilling to be able to use something like that. So very high freeboard, beautiful beach club, beautiful design by Francesco Poskowski. And this macho manly design is very typical of Baglietto. Now let's go on board and take a look around. So first impressions, I have to say, for a 40 meter yacht, this is one huge aft deck. I mean, this is really spacious. The, the sunbathing area here is enormous. The dining table looks like it's probably big enough for 12 people. And then still you've got all of this extra space here as well. And one of the things when you're buying a yacht like this is the practicality. And you can imagine that for the stewardesses to serve at this table, it's relatively easy because of the space they have to move around and to be able to serve uh, the various guests on board. Now, I'm looking at this for the first time, as you are as well, and I find this a very cosy area uh, of the yacht. This looks like backlit onyx here, a sort of a beauty feature. And usually, most yachts have these indents because they're actually covering technical areas. Sometimes it's the exhaust uh, stacks that go through the side and sometimes it's the engine room ventilation. In this case, I don't know what it is, but they're serving a purpose and at the same time looking very attractive. We have some sort of a faux moss wall here. This kind of thing is very typical of a customized yacht. When an owner wants something very specific, the shipyard will work with them to do it. And without a doubt, that will have been a request of the owner. And it serves actually to close off the next area of the yacht, which is the dining table. Here you have a spacious dining table. It looks like probably marble or granite. And that's pretty thick. I would imagine that's very heavy. It's not gonna roll around or fall over in heavy seas. Beautiful custom light fitting here. And I'm gonna guess that there's a huge television behind that mirror because it looks like it's that kind of a mirror. Might be wrong. As Judge Judy sometimes says, I was once wrong in 1947. We walked through uh, the main lobby because you have this gorgeous chrome door and can I tell you as a representation of Baglietto at the shipyard at the boat show this is a great representation of what I think is one of the nicest looking yachts I've seen for a long time beautiful actually absolutely beautiful these light fittings you know it's always amazed me sometimes I've been on yachts um, I hate to say it but American built yachts sometimes and I'm not knocking the American builders, but you'll have light fittings that come from Home Depot and I've never been able to wrap my head around that. This is what a super yacht should have. These beautiful custom light fittings just makes you feel good to, to be on board. I think it's safe to say that's a crew area. I was gonna make a gag about Aquaholic, but I'll, uh, I'll not do that. And then we've got this long corridor which they've used very wisely for storage that's obviously for shoes 
More storage here, which they're currently using for towels. Good, spacious hanging locker there. And this is a concertina door, you see, you can, um, it goes all the way back through. And by putting the bed a little bit off center, they released all of this space here. So you've got a nice sitting area so I can do my makeup in the morning. Massive television. And then just look at this. You know, the Italians do this sort of thing so well, and Baglietto are a great example of, a, of an Italian custom builder. Massive shower with a huge shower head through there. Beautiful marble, absolutely immaculately finished. And these little, these little things like the drainage system here, it's just beautiful. I mean, you know, the sink in my apartment just has a little stainless steel uh, plug. This is rather a nicer way of doing it, isn't it? I won't turn the tap on as much as I'm tempted to, because I want to keep the boat looking immaculate for all the visitors that are going to be on board. And then we'll move down to take a look at the guest quarters. All right, Nick. I don't know what this material is called. I've seen it on a few yachts. It's absolutely beautiful. It's almost like a ceramic, actually. And, and again, it's one of those things that the Italians do so well, is to find these unusual materials that just make it such a pleasure to, to walk around the yacht leather here, ceramic or, or something there. And then it looks like we've got two identical guest VIP staterooms with a nice sized bathroom. This, is a, this has a sliding door obviously so it can be closed off. And I'm guessing the actual toilet is in here. Toilet, bidet there. And a really good sized shower there. So on the other side was an exact replica of that cabin. And then through here, we have two twins. Twin bunks, I'm guessing that if an owner wanted to, they could easily fit a, a Pullman bunk there, which would fold down. Nice, ample sized wardrobes. That's a yeah, decent amount of space there for hanging clothes. And again, a perfectly decent sized shower. I have a feeling though that this yacht is going to be particularly spectacular for the deck space. So let's go and check out the deck space on board. Oh yeah, I did tell you didn't I that this was going to be good. And again, I'm seeing this for the first time, but what a beautiful plunge pool. This is just sensational. This is what yachting is all about, isn't it? It's about taking in the sun, going for a dip in the plunge pool, taking in the sun, having a barbecue, going out on the jet ski, and this shot has everything that you could possibly want. And because it's a Baglietto, I suspect that the performance is pretty impressive too. A little bit further forward, we've got acres of sitting areas. I mean, that's more sunbathing there, seating area here, there's tables for your coffee. It's more than enough yacht that anybody could want. And this is a nice design feature that I, I guess Paskowski has, must have done, that um, to let in a little bit more light and to allow you to see the scenery, Rather than just having a solid bulkhead there, they've made it into a glass panel, so you've got plenty of visibility in all directions. I was curious to see whether there'd be a helm station up here. It would be unusual, actually, for a yacht of this size to have a helm station uh, on, this, on this deck, but it looks like it has a spectacular helm station just here. Actually, I'll let you go first, because that's quite impressive to, to see that. One thing is to talk about the practicality of this, and clearly it's at a position where you can see very clearly all around. But again, look at the design features. It's really spectacular. This, this material here, the nice flush finishing uh, at the top, accessibility of all the controls, the visibility. It's a great boat. I'm really, really glad that they gave us the opportunity to take a look at this. And it's certainly something that um, you've know, had a client who likes that macho go past look who really appreciates deck space uh, who wants the comfort and the glamour of an Italian yacht um, this is one I would certainly recommend for him a couple of things that we've missed I'm going to go and find them now one is the galley and I'm guessing the galley is going to be down there the other thing by the way is the bow because I can see that there's something going on up there so we'll take a look so very quickly we have we're now down from the helm station where this is obviously a butler's pantry, an area for sort of food prep. 
but the, the main galley is in the crew quarters. So let's take a look down here. I can hear some pots and pans, so they may be cooking something. Okay, so this is the, uh, the, the galley for the yacht. It's functional, it's stainless steel, which I, I always think looks very professional. It's easy to keep clean. It's very hygienic, very professional looking machine there, which I'm not sure what it is. Oh, it's a dishwasher. <laughs> oh, and this, okay, that's the hot plate. And that's the oven. Oh, Gagano as well, one of the best, uh, one of the best brands in the world. And it's interesting when you see these wide ovens, it's often because, of course, people enjoy eating fish on boats. They enjoy catching their own fish. And that's an oven just made for a nice big sea bass or something similar to that. And this is a surprise, a very, very spacious uh, washing drying area for, for ironing as well. So a great laundry room, which you can, on a yacht of this size, that's somewhat of a surprise to see that. Crew quarters are through there. When the crew herders come coming, they went scampering and all disappeared behind that door. So I'm guessing that that's where they live and they don't want to be disturbed. So now let's finish by looking at the bow. Actually, I hadn't noticed this, that you can get to the bow from this deck. That's a nice solution. It's something you see more and more on yachts at the moment. It used to be that you'd have to go back to the aft deck and down the side decks. It makes so much more sense to just reduce a little bit of the beam here for the uh, sun deck and make direct access to the uh, sunbathing area at the bow. So yeah, if you're a sun lover and you don't have the problems with catching the sun that I do, where I become radioactive, this is a great place to just hang out. You've got space for a jet ski there, uh, a nicely concealed crane as well. This is a nice space. Let's go and check out that beach club. This is more likely where I would hang out because you can enjoy the, the sea and the views and the fresh air, but you have a little bit more shade, so I won't turn into a, a tomato. I had a few comments yesterday because uh, my face was getting so red. And as you can see, there's a side door on this side that opens up and there's also one on that side. So actually you can open up and have fresh air coming into this area and it must be absolutely delightful actually. And I noticed, I was wondering where the tender would be. I like this when they put a window so you can see the tender. I don't quite understand why it always has to be hidden away. It's kind of cool to be able to look in there and see the tender bay. And I'll just let you go through there and, uh, and show what looks like a quite sizable Castoldi tender. So we've left Baglietto in the super yacht area of the show on that floating dock. And now we're in what I consider to be the heart of the Cannes Yachting Festival, where all the big names are. I have Ferretti Group behind me. Now, for those of you that don't know, Ferretti Group have many, many different brands, not just Ferretti Yachts, but also Riva, Custom Line, CRN, Pershing. It's an absolute powerhouse in Italian yachting and therefore in the world of yachting. Right next to them, we have Azimut, which is the other big name. Azimut Bonetti produced so many of the world's yachts. So this is where the heart is. Further down, we have San Lorenzo, uh, Canados, other production yacht builders. And this is a massively important show for them. At one time when I was cutting my teeth in the world of yachting, it was really the Genoa show that a lot of these massive manufacturers would sell most of their boats. Um, with time, Genoa has become less popular, to be honest. It almost always rains there. It's very difficult to get in and out of the show. There's not many hotels close by. And so not surprisingly, Cannes in the sunshine with the beautiful hotels that are here have become such an important show for all of those manufacturers. For that reason, sometimes it's quite difficult to get on board the boats if you're not actually buying because this is the time that many of them will be selling most of their yachts. So I'm gonna shut up and we're just gonna show you some footage of this part of the show.